Do you want to know what to eat in order to lose weight? Well, I'm going to share the top 10 foods that are helping me to shed pounds over 50. Hey everyone, it's Kathy. Welcome to Style with Kathy Over 50. And I thought today I would share my top 10 go-to foods that are helping me to lose weight. And this is also my monthly weight loss update video. I will link my weight loss playlist here if you want to catch up. But in a nutshell, I've been working one-on-one -on -one with a dietitian since mid-July of 2023, and to date, I have lost 21.8 pounds. I've been going through a difficult time, so I really wasn't losing weight for about a month and a half, but I'm back on track, and I have gained, I think, a pound or so last month, but I brought it back down. So I'm almost halfway to my 50-pound target. So hopefully by the end of, what are we in, April, I will be at uh, minus 25 pounds. So I thought it would be fun today if I could share with you the top 10 foods for weight loss that you can enjoy while still reaching your goals. So I believe it's really important that I enjoy the food that I'm eating because this is a new way of life. I'm not really counting calories or points. I'm just using a plate and eating a healthy diet. So I'll link that video here where I go into great detail about how the balanced plate kind of way of eating works. And actually, it's the easiest way that I've ever lost weight in my life because I find that I'm no longer stressing about food or counting calories or worrying about what I can eat at my next meal. So it's a really simple way to eat. It's a healthy way to eat. You may not lose 10 pounds a month, but you know, I'm almost 56 years old. I have had a few detours along the way because of some stress I'm going through in my personal life, but I know that if I stick to this way of eating, I will lose weight. I don't believe in depriving myself, and I think that's a really important thing to remember whenever you are planning for success for the rest of your life. Because if I deprive myself, I know I'm setting myself up for failure. Okay, so the first food that I am enjoying are avocados. Avocados are packed with healthy fats and fiber. They can help you feel full and satisfied. And I like to include avocados in salads and also in smoothies. Now they are a healthy fat, but you don't want to eat, you know, five avocados in a day. You do have to use common sense. And a tip that I use, because sometimes when I go to the grocery store, the avocados are already a little too ripe. So I have found them in the frozen food section. So I buy my groceries at Walmart and in the frozen food section, they have all kinds of frozen fruits and vegetables and avocados are great. Cause say I wanna put them in a salad, I'll just take out a few pieces that I wanna include in my salad maybe an hour before I'm going to eat. And by the time I sit down to eat my salad, they are completely thawed out. So that's just a little tip, you know, and it's also a little cheaper, I think, to buy frozen fruits and vegetables sometimes rather than buying fresh. The second food that I love and that is helping me stay on plan is Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt is high in protein and it can boost your metabolism and keep you feeling full longer. I eat Greek yogurt every morning for my breakfast. I have the same breakfast every day. I am boring, but it works for me. So I use the Oikos Greek yogurt 2% vanilla yogurt. I cleared this with my dietitian, and I do not like plain Greek yogurt. I do not like the no sugar kind. And as long as everything is balanced, you know, the little bit of uh, sugar in the 2% vanilla, it's not going to really do that much damage. So like I said earlier, I have to eat things that I like. I can't feel deprived. And whenever I have my Greek yogurt, I don't measure, but you know, for being a lifelong member of Weight Watchers, I can kind of eyeball things and, you know, approximately know how much I'm eating. So I would say every morning I have about three quarter cup of the Oikos 2% vanilla Greek yogurt. And then on top of that, I'll sprinkle approximately a quarter cup of a mixture of blueberries and raspberries. So I buy those frozen because whenever I'm eating fruit, like with yogurt, I don't like the um, sourness of the frozen. So I just get a container of blueberries and raspberries every week 
wash them, mix them together, just drizzle them with like maybe a quarter teaspoon of maple syrup, real maple syrup, not that, you know, fake stuff you can get in the grocery store. And that just kind of keeps them fresh for the week. And oh my gosh, it is so, so good. And then I'll just sprinkle a little bit of granola on top. I buy this high protein granola, usually off of Amazon. It's sometimes difficult to find in the grocery store. And again, I keep it less than a quarter cup. I probably use maybe an eighth of a cup. I just sprinkle a little bit just to have a little bit of crunch on it. And yes, I know that there is sugar in it, but the dietitian said as long as everything is in balance and I'm not eating, you know, a cup a day, it is fine. And, you know, my yogurt berries and this little bit of granola on top actually will keep me full for a good four to five hours until it's lunchtime. And if I am um, making smoothies, I have tried to make smoothies with the plain and the no sugar added Greek yogurt, and I can still uh, tell I do not like the taste. So you know what? I have to be happy. I have to feel satisfied because if I'm not satisfied, then I'm going to start grazing and, you know, the wheels are going to come off the bus and we're going to end up in the ditch and been there too many times before. I don't want to end up there again. So chicken is pretty much the meat that I eat 99% of the time. And chicken is healthy because it is a lean meat that will keep you feeling full for longer. And, you know, it's super simple to cook chicken. I buy them from the butcher because um, I get them deboned and skinless. And they're so much fresher than what you can buy in a grocery store. So if you live close to a butcher, I highly recommend that you just try their boneless, skinless chicken breasts. And you're instantly going to notice the quality and the freshness is so much better than what you can get in a grocery store. So a real simple way that I like to cook my chicken, I just uh, put them in a Pyrex dish already frozen. I'll drizzle them or I have a little sprayer with either avocado oil or olive oil, just a tiny little bit. And then I will um, season it with like some salt and pepper, maybe some Italian seasoning, just, you know, whatever I have kicking around. Sometimes I'll use some of that Lowry's seasoning, just whatever. And then I flip them over and I do the same thing on the other side. I cook them at 350 for 45 minutes and then I use my digital meat thermometer and you want to make sure that your thermometer is reading 165 Fahrenheit. Depending on how thick the chicken breast is, most of the time they are ready, but always depend on your digital meat thermometer because it is so important to cook chicken. You don't want to end up getting food poisoning from undercooked chicken. And then you can, you know, cook a few extra ones if you're not going to eat uh, all of them and they're handy to have in the fridge, you can chop them up, put them in your salad, you can put them in wraps, you can even make uh, chicken soup. And it's uh, super quick and easy to do that whenever you have like cooked chicken in your fridge. So this is a staple and it's a great source of protein that helps me um, feel full longer. The next food that is new to me is quinoa and I've only recently started using it so I'm still learning. But quinoa is a complete protein and it's a great alternative to refined grains and it can help you feeling full. It's also a great addition to a salad. So sometimes what I'll do is if I'm making say a salad with lettuce in it, I'll just put maybe a quarter cup of the cooked quinoa that is already in my fridge and I'll add that to the salad. So it's just an extra boost, I guess, to get some extra protein because protein helps to keep you feel full and satisfied. I could not get through this uh, weight loss journey without my berries, and I'm talking about my blueberries and my raspberries. They are low in calories, but high in antioxidants, and berries can be a sweet treat that can help curb cravings. So I start my morning with blueberries and raspberries. It's also great to keep frozen blueberries and raspberries in the freezer to use them for your smoothies. And I'm okay with like frozen berries for smoothies, but it's just, I, I don't like eating them uh, if I'm just eating, say, berries alone. And uh, blueberries and raspberries are low in the glycemic index, which means that they're not going to turn to sugar so quickly as, say, um, you know, other fruits that uh, have a higher glycemic index. I usually stick to my berries. I'll occasionally have watermelon. I like grapes, you know, bananas, 
that's about um, the I think what is that five fruits that uh, are my favorites I really don't like melons or cantaloupe or things like that so I'm happy with my blueberries and my raspberries. If you could do me a favor, if you have not hit the subscribe button, it would really help my channel to grow. I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers and it would really help my channel to get pushed out by YouTube and help me reach my goal. And it doesn't cost anything and I upload videos two to three times a week. Thank you. The next food, I could eat this for breakfast, lunch, and supper, and I'm talking about broccoli. I love broccoli. I always have. I love it raw. I love it cooked. It is just such a versatile vegetable. Broccoli is packed with fiber and nutrients, and it's a great low-calorie option for weight loss. You can, you know, have a veggie tray. I've also cooked them in the oven. You just, uh, you know, put a little bit of olive oil on top, some Salt and pepper for seasoning, it's great that way. Steamed, boiled, whichever way you wanna make broccoli, it's just really such a versatile vegetable. Now I will tell you, I've noticed in the last year when I buy frozen broccoli, the quality is not as great as a few years ago. I find now when you buy frozen broccoli, they just, it's mostly a lot of just the stems and I like the flower part. So what I do is I will buy broccoli crowns. So basically they've taken off the stalk, which goes in the garbage anyways. I never use the stalk. I just cook the, the hand, the flower. I don't know what you call them. But uh, yeah, if you buy the crowns, you're not paying for the stalk that's gonna go in the garbage. So that's um, just a little tip too. The next food that is helping me to lose weight is actually new to me. And it's actually my daughter that got me turned on to chickpeas. So chickpeas are rich in fiber. They are a plant-based protein that is filling and nutritious. And I have this chickpea salad that I um, have recently started eating for lunch and I will create a video on it, it's coming. But it's really satisfying because if you wanna say have a meatless day, this is a great alternative to eating meat and it's very, very filling. So it's a super simple salad to make. You can just throw in some chickpeas after you've rinsed them. Make sure they're uh, pre-cooked if they come in a can. And then, you know, you add some cucumber, uh, pepper, uh, red pepper, a little bit of onion. Mix it all together and then I just drizzle it with some olive oil, some balsamic vinegar. Season it if you want with salt and pepper. And then just uh, put a little bit of feta cheese on top. And probably a cup to a cup and a half is probably the amount that I'm eating at lunch. And it's very, very filling and it's very healthy. But you have to remember to get the canned chickpeas and they have to be cooked. Another trick you can do, you can Google this. I haven't done this in a long, long time. You can roast the chickpeas in your oven and that makes a really uh, nutritious and great tasting snack. So eggs are also very important to have on hand whenever you're trying to lose weight. I must admit, I'm not the biggest egg fan, but I will eat them. So eggs are high in protein and nutritious, and they can help you feeling full and satisfied throughout the day. So boiled eggs for salads. Uh, sometimes I'll have like a boiled egg and a piece of toast for my dinner. Scrambled eggs. Don't think of eggs as just a breakfast food. I mean, you can have them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They're very, very versatile. And um, they do help to keep me full. Probably my favorite way to eat egg would be like a boiled egg. And then um, I'll put a little bit of pepper and a little bit of butter on top. And yes, I still eat butter, but I, I don't have it like at every meal. Usually the only time I'll use butter is whenever I'm eating broccoli, potatoes, or um, boiled eggs. And if I'm making a sandwich, I'll just lightly butter one slice of the bread. But uh, eggs are super good to have on hand. They are very, very versatile. The next thing that is helping me to stay on track, and this has been so beneficial and in helping me mainly in the evenings when we're watching TV to curb any cravings, and I'm talking about nuts. Now you wanna be careful, you don't want to go over a quarter cup of nuts for the day. 
because they are good for you, but they also do have a lot of calories in them. Nuts are high in calories, but they're a great source of healthy fats that can help you feeling full. So one of my favorite go-to snacks for in the evening, and sometimes I'm not hungry at dinner time, so I'll make this and this is my like dinner slash snack. So I'll take about 10 almonds and then I'll have an apple and a cheese stick. And that is my supper or my little charcuterie board snack. And just the combination of the almonds with the cheese, whenever I have them together, that really stops any cravings that I have for sugar or anything fattening that I'm craving. So that's a tip that I learned from the dietitian. It doesn't have to be almonds. I sometimes will also have walnuts, but I always come back to almonds because they are my favorite. And just, you know, count out 10 or 12 and um, you're gonna be totally fine, but try them with some with a cheese stick and I think that you'll agree that it is a great healthy and nutritious snack. The next food that is really helpful are apples and apples are a delicious treat high in fiber and antioxidants and they have anti-inflammatory properties. So I told you about how I have my apple with my charcuterie board but also you know, try putting apples into salads. If you have like a spinach salad, you could throw in maybe a couple of walnuts and maybe um, half an apple diced up. It is so good in a salad. Even like those little uh, clementine oranges, they are also very good in salad. So just think of different ways that you can incorporate apples or clementines into salads or um, your main meal because it is an added way of getting fiber and we know that fiber keeps us feeling full so we'll eat less but it also helps to keep us regular. Try incorporating these 10 favorite foods for weight loss into your diet and watch the pounds melt away. Go check out How to Lose Weight Without Dieting, the balanced plate approach and I go into great detail on the program that I'm working on with the dietitian. Thanks for watching this video. Remember to subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you soon. Bye.